It is Sunday night, means we're talking baseball. All coming up next on the Rotowire Fantasy Baseball Podcast. Happy Sunday evening, everybody. Welcome to the Rotowire Fantasy Baseball Podcast. We are sponsored by Fantrax in this preseason. We appreciate them for that, uh, the sponsorship uh, all preseason long. I am Scott Jensted, joined as always on Sunday nights by Jeff Erickson. Jeff, it must be baseball season. I'm wearing my Reds hat. That means uh, I'm ready to go. Our Reds hat. I mean, yeah. it's your hat, but <laughs> our red hat for our Reds. There you go. Honestly, you know what? I need a new one. Uh, I got to get one of those. You're ahead of me on that. I'm a, I'm, I'm less of a fan of our reds than you are. Although I do have a Votto Jersey, but still it's time. And I need to get like an LA Jersey and I need to get a hat. So I got to get that. Th these are things I need to do this spring. There you go. Yeah. We're ready to go. I'm ready to go. It's, uh, it's definitely draft time. We're, uh, we're in March now officially. Uh, we were just talking as we came on here, we got some, got some slow drafts going uh, emphasis on the slow part of that. Uh, but yeah. we're, we're moving along your, uh, both of our yogurt drafts are still going in the teens, not even the twenties yet. I have a DC for the uh, champions league qualifier that is, um, a little bit slow so far we're like in round 11 and i keep looking down and realizing forgetting that it's 50 rounds and not 30 and uh realizing that i might i might be here a while yeah you might be i gotta sign up for mine i think i think it really gotta think that i'm going to be uh doing a uh uh, uh doing the, the the champions league i think i'm gonna commit to it there i got a crazy you're, you're, you're a soccer fan you gotta do it right yeah i've got beach f erickson tomorrow night drew the 11th spot uh, right. my 11th choice I had the 11th pick and I uh, got 11. So I'm fine with it, actually. I just left it straight. By, butter, uh, but By the time you draft, you might be able to take Ronald Cunha at that pick. Uh, yeah, that might be true. Uh, spent a little bit of time on that uh, in the today's Sirius XM show yesterday and today, actually. So yesterday I did our regular Rotowire show. Today I was doing part of the mixed, the Tout Wars mixed, or no, not Tout Wars, the Labor Mixed League Auction, 12 team Mixed League Auction. Um, and of course, yeah, yeah, spent a lot of time talking about the Acuna injury and the, you know, the possibilities there, because we just don't know he's flying yeah. to LA. Uh, he's going to see your surgeon, Dr. Yep. Neil Ella trash yeah. did, um, uh, did my shoulder. He is excellent. Did an excellent job on mine. Yes. And so, you know, it's, you know, it, but it's scary. They're going to yeah. a preeminent specialist, the knee specialist, like and he, this is the same knee that he had the torn ACL. So I, I have seen the last two days there are NFBC leagues where Acuna did not go first. Yeah, I saw a I saw a Wit yesterday. I saw a Strider one today. Um, Acuna's got it shows irritation in his uh, in his knee. You, you mentioned seeing Doctor Neil Elatrosh on Monday. Uh, it's, it'll be interesting. We got this like this seventy two hours where it's kind of up in the air. Tomorrow mm -hmm. or Tuesday, we should know. You know if it's you know a, a week or so or a month or a couple months. I saw. I've seen some guesses that, you know, it could be a lot of things. It could be anywhere from, you know, a short term to a long term. So we get this weird 72 hours, though, where, you know, if he's if it's one to three weeks, he's still easily the number one player in the draft. I mean, he was he was taken in one and I think every online championship uh, draft until today or I guess until yesterday. Um, but it's uh, it's wild. It, it puts a little wrinkle in these drafts here. It really does. And, you know, it's right off the top, I mean, it's just. It, number one, you want security, you want peace. But you know the thing is, he's got such a buffer in terms of projected value yep. uh, that if he just misses a week or two and does the same things, then he it's still he's still the one point one. I was gonna say, what at what point of a uh, of a timetable for you does he have to? Is he not the number one, the one one anymore? I would say one of two things: a scope where he actually has to you know get a procedure done on it, um, or four weeks, anything like four weeks from now, you know, okay. cause that means so missing oh, a week to two weeks of the season. Cause that also, you also have to wonder after that, mm -hmm. is he going to run? Is he going yeah. to be the same player? Uh, cause so much value is baked into his speed. We asked this question before and he, and he answered a resounding yes in 2022 when he came back and ran, let alone last year. But you know, that, that was, I was one of the, the nervous Nellies. Is he going to run coming back from a torn ACL? Yes, he is going to run. Uh, but, you know, it's an irritation in the same area. And meniscus is, I think this is going to be an ongoing thing in his career. Um, I, I saw an example saying, you know, that twinge you feel walking up and down stairs when you're our age. Uh, that's what that feels like for him. That's that's what I, I don't know if that's verified. If that's true. But that's kind of like how that's been described. 
Jeff, we can go with our reds. I don't know if I want to go with our age, though. Hey, well, you are younger than me. That's true. <laughs> do you start with a five yet? I do not start with a five yet, Jeff. Ah, you're young and okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting. Tomorrow's a, a big day news. I don't know if we'll get news tomorrow. He's seeing the doctor tomorrow. Maybe we get new t- news on Tuesday. But obviously, um, you know, that is a that is a massive piece of news for the guy that's going 1-1 in every single draft all offseason long. So uh, we'll wait on that. Um, some other news today, though. Uh, David Bednar, one of the, uh, you know, one of the closers that goes in kind of that second to third tier closers, uh, has some lat tightness um, resting for a few days. As you mentioned, mm-hmm. as we were getting on the air, uh, lat head just can mean a lot of things. So this is another one that like you want to see him back on the mound. We hold our breath a little bit. Absolutely. And you know, they have a ready replacement in a world as Chapman too. So it's one that I don't, I don't think he's at, uh, at risk of not getting saves as long as he's healthy, but lat tightness can often lead to shoulder or back, or it can mean nothing. You know, it can, I mean, it's something, but it can, it can go away quickly too. It's not like an automatic death sentence, but it also can be significant at times, too. I'm really being wishy-washy here. I get it. Uh, but the whole point is, it's enough that I'm like, it's going to give me a little bit of pause. I was going to say, you're drafting tomorrow. How much pause does it give you when his ADP comes up? I mean, versus it, it, other, there'll be other closers in his range, and I'll probably go with another one in his range. If he slips. I was say that the question is, if he slips around, then do you take him? I, you probably do, right? Do you take him? Uh, I'm looking down here, Alexis Diaz. Then we've got, there's like a big gap until Paul Seawald. Do you still take him before Paul Seawald, right? I probably put him in that tier. I okay. probably take Munoz. And then I think I take Munoz over Bednar because I think I'm also higher on Munoz now that all that's happened in Seattle so far. Yeah. Uh, really like Munoz. Uh, love, uh, I, I think we talked about clothes. I think you know, I, you know, I love Munoz already. Um, I like fishing in this pool though. I mean, take I, it before, uh, before Evan Phillips. Pete Fairbanks? I think he's in that. I think okay. he's with Seawald, Phillips, Fairbanks. I like all those guys. I like Munoz a lot too. So I think that's where I'm all of a sudden at on him there. Uh, you know, because just, hey, the last thing you want is to lose four weeks, six weeks of the season. Um, and then if Roldis Chapman is lights out during that time, are they going to, what are they going to do? Who knows? Uh, it just adds that layer of uncertainty. And, you know, and it, that that's, and the thing is, the problem is with the closer, when he comes, if, like if it's a starting pitcher, he comes back to a starting pitching job. As a closer, he's not guaranteed to close. And if he's not closing, what does he do for you? Can't have him active. Excuse me. I get all uh, choked up over when, that apparently. But uh, when did uh, the, when did the Pirates the pa- Pirates last win the World Series? Like seventy one or something like that. Uh, seventy nine. Seventy nine. That's right. Okay. So yeah, again, Orioles, good, right? a, a long gap though. That's what forty four years. Uh, Chapman was on the Cubs when they broke their streak. Chapman was on the Rangers when they won the first time ever. Maybe, maybe Chapman's a lucky charm here. Oh, you're, you're, you're so clever. Um, no, Could be. he's not, he's not, he's, he's not, he's certainly not charming. Um, he's definitely not charming, but yeah, the, we are family team was 79 beat the Orioles that year. Right. Yep. That's correct. Um, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I just, I, I, I would think I, if, if I get caught at the end of a closer run and I'm drafting 11th tomorrow, I'm going to be on an end. Yeah. So it's possible that I may have to, yeah, you know, I m- might miss out. Cause I do like getting a closer in that grouping there. Um, I don't yes. often get the earlier grouping there, but you know, the thing is too, you can get false flags with these injuries. Remember the Rizale Igles- Iglesias freak out last year. Yep. Um, you got him at a discount last year and he turned out just fine. And it and it's early on. It's still March third, so we got a ways to go. I think Bednar, from what I've read, I think he'll be fine. But you know, it's one of those things you've got to you got to keep in mind. Uh, big piece of news on I think it was late Friday night. Matt Chapman it finally was. signed. Uh, one of the you know the the big four or five guys are still waiting on Matt Chapman signed with the Giants. Um, not fun for me as an A's fan who loves Matt Chapman to have him go to the Giants. But what are you going to do? Um, how do you think this this works out? They've got a lot of third basemen in San Francisco. Do you think he'll play? It sounds like he's not going to play shortstop. There was that rumor for a, a few minutes. There um, was the mistyped tweet from, from Susan Slusser is what uh, caused that, that and all that. And she said something, alluded to something about her drinking or something like that. She was out when she did that. <laughs> and and she, I don't know. I think it was just like a typo laden tweet. Uh, so it was kind of funny, but um, I don't think she was drunk. I don't want to spread anything there, but I, people misinterpreted that to be shortstop, but it's not a bad idea because they have JD Davis and Wilmer Flores that can also play third base. And they have Marco Luciano at short, who is not proven as a hitter. If they want to have an offense heavy lineup, maybe Chapman at short isn't a bad idea. Of course, Chapman's been a little bit of a lighter hitter himself lately too. Um, 
just feel like he's such an elite third baseman and it's part of his value that like, yes. man, I just don't know if I want to move off that because he is, he's awesome at third base. Yeah. And you know what? He's also, you know, the Giants also induce a lot of ground balls. So from that yep. standpoint too, it's good. I can tell you that absolutely happened on Friday night, by the way, too, because we were doing the AL LABR broadcast in Sirius XM. It ended at nine o'clock my time. <laughs> Did, it anyone, was announced did, any, did anyone draft him? Oh yeah, because in yeah. labor, the way it works in these only leagues is you can you can auction, you can buy them or draft them in the reserves if you want. If he signs with an AL team, congrats, you get him. If he signs with an AL team, you get nothing and like it. So we talked about that with Snell with him because right. we have so many guys that are unsigned. It's almost like a stupid lockout year. Yeah, that's uh, th that's pretty wild. So that person does not get him. No, the person does get him. And he said it's NL labor. Uh, this was AL labor. And oh, then, so the person did not get him. I got yeah, him. he got nothing. Okay. Um, and then, so yeah, it, it, JD, it, we got, we still have to resolve JD Martinez, Blake Snell, a handful of others, but uh, Ray flowers yeah. was doing the, the second two, the last two hours of that five hour broadcast. And he, one year in labor, he died, decided to steer into it. I think it might've been one of those extreme years. It might've been the lockout year. And he, he bought five such free agents and none of them signed. So he'll never do that again. Wasn't there that Machado Harper year too, where they took a long time to sign and both of them got huge deals? I don't think it was this late though, was it? I don't think it was probably. Quite, I don't think it was quite this late, but I remember it lasted. It felt like it lasted a long time. Jordan Montgomery too, not not signed also. Is, Jordan uh, Montgomery, that's the other one I forgot. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Still some names in there. Um, spoiler: We're going to talk about Matt Chapman here in a little bit. We are talking about uh, hitters and pitchers after pick two hundred. Matt Chapman is on that list to discuss. We will get to a little more details on, on Chappie here. Um, Josh Young cleared to resume baseball activities. I think this is going to be one of those ones that we're going to be happy he got hurt early on in spring training. Seems like he's progressing at least the right way. We want to see him get some spring training games, but he is at least uh, progressing in a positive manner. Um, not so much for Vaughn Grissom. Uh, the new uh, Red Sox uh, seem to be second baseman, has a groin strain, could miss opening day. Uh, not great news there for Grissom. No, and you know some people were kind of big on him. Uh, and for good reason. I mean, if you look at his hitting stats, they, they were fine. It was just a question of can the glove play anywhere? And, you know, given that they gave up, gave up Chris Sale for him, you know they're going to give him, like, multiple chances. And he still will get those chances, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, opening day is just a starting point. Uh, it doesn't mean – I you know, we we all like to try to avoid the uh, the, the the red crosses there on draft day. Uh, but at the same time, not all injuries are created the same. You know, he's also not going to cost you a whole lot either. So I, I'll – I, I don't have him yet, but I'm not opposed to rostering him still. Yeah, I mean, he hit 330 in AAA last year. Like, I know that he didn't do anything in the majors, and people liked him. He had no home runs and no steals, but he hit 330 in AAA last year. It's still uh, still a bat in there somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I am, I'm reducing his playing time projection by 5%. It's what kind of I do on these sort of things here, if it's uncertain there. Just, just enough yeah. to take off a little bit. The Red Sox. Let's talk a little Red Sox here while we're at sure. Well, no, we got a Red Sox. I, I got another gateway player to talk about that one and our hitters after pick 200. So we'll discuss the, the Red Sox log jam in a second. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, speaking of our Reds, uh, Nick Lodolo, I'm going to need you to uh. put some light on this one. So it seems like he is still – quote feeling his leg after like the day after he pitches still feeling something in his leg so he's seeing a specialist for his left tibia on monday um i couldn't tell if it was a check-in or something's wrong and then i read further it seems like something's wrong this was not good no it's not i mean there there's a health risk in it and a performance risk with lodolo uh I, I love the idea of him i think i said i was higher on him than hunter green last year obviously that didn't work out not that hunter green did work out the best play was not to play um yeah. it's like the wire uh, the only way you win is to, not to play, but uh, you got to draft somebody at some point. I, I, I was sure you were going for with no play for Mr. Gray there. I'm just playing. Uh, no, I mean, we, I can't, it's got to apply. I mean, that would have been forcing it, Scott. Come on. What kind of monster do you think I am? True. You would never force anything. I apologize. Oh, no, never. Come on. Never, never. Uh, the fact that it, it, he had a hard time shaking it last year and he was dealing with it this year. And then it's, yeah. he's heading for testing now. We're, we're like six oh. months off when he had the problem and he's still feeling the day after pitches. I mean, that's just it's bad. I just, I don't think it messed with it at all. I just, I mean, if he, I mean, he's going to slide pretty far now. Maybe you just take a shot in him and the thought is you drop him in a couple of weeks, but man, this is just, it feels not good to me. He's already in the three hundreds. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's price point is fine, but again, <laughs> It, it, the thing is, too, he's almost at the point now where well, he's not almost he's at the point now where if it, you know, he, he he's in streamer territory. If you're going to take a chance on these guys, you got to he's got to be playing. 
right? I mean, yeah, I, sure. I just, I, I he's not high enough to stash. No. And if he's not present, if he's not there on, yeah. on in the first couple of weeks of the season, yeah. you're going to have to cut him anyhow for the first guy that comes available. So yeah. I probably I'm more thinking that. if you're drafting now, you could do it with the thought that he's a cut the first that first fab period before the season even starts. But yeah, yeah if we're in you know Vegas in March and he's not going to be ready, I just I, I think you just don't even touch him. Yeah, I won't I won't draft him tomorrow in the 12 teamer. Uh, yeah. And a 15 teamer, I think I probably will be more inclined to do so. But and, and to that end, uh, there have been 19 drafts since Friday uh, in the NFBC environment. He's been drafted in 17 of them. So there's a couple leagues where he didn't get drafted at all. There's another one where he was picked 404. Yeah, it's not uh, not great. I did not like to see that because he's fun to watch, and I was hoping mm-hmm. for a, a, hoping for a nice bounce back and a healthy year. But not a good way to start it. Um, some good news before we jump into our hitters and pitchers after pick 200. Gunnar Henderson uh, on the Orioles schedule to play on Monday. Another one that seems like um, that uh, it's going to be uh, one of those ones you, you, you're glad he got hurt, you know, in February rather than March. So it seems like he's going to be fine. Yeah, uh, seems like it. Hopefully, you know, it's an oblique injury. So you hoping he's not coming back too soon. Question from uh, Steven in the chat. Are you going to use your Champions League qualifier ticket in Vegas or looking for a soft landing? Uh, first of all, I don't think there's a soft landing in the main event. I've tried to do that online. I never can. I, I don't think there is such a thing. Maybe a little softer than in person in Vegas, but there are people in in Vegas that don't uh, draft great either. I think, I think drafting live is hard. I think drafting people uh, make mistakes drafting live. Um, I'm not going to do mine in Vegas. I think I'll probably do my online one just the way I signed up because I'd already signed up for Vegas. But uh, I don't really think there's many soft landings in the main event, honestly. Yeah, well, Steve's just trying to goad me, I think, because he knows that, I, you know, Vegas was a hard landing for me last year, and I was yeah. in his league. So, uh, um, so I, 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 Machado and Harper signed late February. I wasn't too far off on that. Yeah, you, yeah, you were yeah. pretty good there. Yeah, and, and that, they were like, they were like the guys. And I remember it was like December, like where are they signing? Where are they signing? It took like three months. It was wild. Yeah. Um, well, it's there's there's a common denominator in all of this, right? Uh, baseball owners. That's, uh, well, okay, maybe two then. Agents also. Yes, that's true. Was were Harper and Machado both Boris? I think they were. Uh, I'd have to go Harper through was. the search yeah, history I and check too, that out, the update yeah. history. And honestly, I, 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 I'm too easily distracted as it is. If I start going down that rabbit hole, I'll probably miss something you're saying, and that would be awkward. <laughs> that would never happen, Jeff. I never, never, never. Let's uh, let's talk some hitters and pitchers after pitch one. We talked a lot about uh, guys in the first ten rounds the last couple of weeks. I wanted to j- kind of jump back and talk about some guys who are going later in drafts. So you know. Uh, back, uh, back half in 12 teamers back like 16, 17 rounds in a 15 teamer. Uh, but first a note from our sponsors at Fantrax. Fantrax is the most customizable fantasy platform in the industry, offering the greatest fantasy experience for your dynasty keeper redraft and best ball leagues. Are you coming from another service? Fantrax makes that easy as well. They can import any of your current leagues and customize them as needed. Fantrax offers the most in-depth player pool in the industry, including minor league players. If you need a customizable commissioner service for your fantasy league, Fantrax does that as well. They offer more customization than any other platform. Uh, however you want to run waivers, whatever categories you want to play, scoring system, whatever schedule you want to implement, head-to-head, all that kind of stuff. Fantrax can do it all. They offer custom solutions for all that and more, and it's all free. Sign up for free today to win an official MLB jersey signed by Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Simply go to Fantrax.com slash Rotowire and sign up today. That's F-A-N-T-R-A-X.com slash Rotowire. Fantrax, the home of fantasy sports. Jeff, let's get into some uh, some late hitters. First, I want to hit you uh, pick 205 or so. We've got uh, Jared Kelnick moving from Seattle to Atlanta, someone that uh, we've been waiting on the big, gigantic breakout here for a couple of years now, has not delivered. Obviously, a huge prospect got traded from the Mets, the Mariners, and the Edwin Diaz trade. Am I right on that one? I think I am. You are uh, correct on that one, sir. He was finally better in the majors last year after some really bad runs, hit 253, 11 home runs, 13 stolen bases, but... Man, the strikeouts just continued to be a massive issue for Kelnick. He was 31.7% strikeout rate guy last year. I know there were some good times, but in the first two months, he looked like he was weird in the breakout. Ten home runs, seven stolen bases in, in March and April, and then kind of nothing. You know, the stat cast page, you look at it, the hard contact looks okay. Everything looks pretty good until you get to the strikeout and whiff rates, and they're both under 10%. Uh, how do you feel about Kelnick kind of overall entering, you know, this uh, part of his career where, you know, he's not the Uber prospect anymore. He should be producing. Um, he's moving to Atlanta, uh, a better park than Seattle. They're obviously a great lineup, but probably a more crowded lineup. Um, ADP is 205. Uh, how do you feel about Kelnick? I'm not that far off on Kelnick. I've got him like at, with my projection, at least has him about 235. Uh, that, that'll get him on occasion. Yeah. Um, 
I lo- obviously we love the ballpark change. We love the li- being in a better lineup. You know, the fact that Alex Anthropolis said that the team is leaning towards playing him every day in left field rather than platooning him is good. They said that a couple of weeks ago. So take that with the appropriate green assault. But uh, yet I haven't rostered him yet. I might. It's just it's the it's the case. It's the fact that he fought the water cooler and lost. Uh, you know, it's that he slumped in the second half. Now, that might have been re- uh, related. That might have been a related note, but he was already slumping, which led to the water cooler mauling in the first place there. Uh, but. I, yeah, I mean, I, I think is I am shopping for bats currently in TGFBI in the 200 range. And there's, I think Kelnick's already gone, but th- there are that this is this, this whole podcast is geared towards me. You didn't realize it. You, you declare the topic, not me. So it's not about me. No, he's, a, he's still available. Actually, I lied. I take that back. He is available. This is going to be good for you then. Cause we got, we're going to talk about a lot of guys in the 200s that you might be able to take. Absolutely. We're at pick 203 right now. So this is like, this is Jeff centric. I, you I got, you got, we got three runs of Kelnick in the majors, 2021, 2022, and then last year, 93, uh-huh. 54, 105 games. Strikeout rates, 28.1%, 33.7%, 31.7%. It's not getting better, which, you know, you hope that the first couple of years, maybe that first time through, but the 33% last year really sticks out to me. If that was like 26, mm-hmm. 27, maybe we're doing something, we're, we're, we're working towards something. Um I think those are the guys in the range I like more. I don't think I'm doing it. I mentioned that the Braves have a deep lineup, but kind of their one through nine is deep, but they don't have like a, a bunch of guys on the bench that like waiting to take spots either. Like you look at their bench, there's nobody that like you're worried about taking Kelnick's spot right away. Uh, you know, Marcelo Zuna will DH. They do not want him to play the outfield. So left field is kind of lined up for Kelnick to play a lot. So I think he gets a pretty good run early on, but um, you know, the Braves are serious. I don't think they're going to take uh, a guy hitting 220 with a 32% strikeout rate and just kind of leave him in there all year either. Right. Well, and that's the thing is, if he hits 250 like he did last year, okay, you're fine with it. Yeah. You can live with that. That won't kill you. If he and hits he's, 210, he's still, he's still not 25, too. Yeah. So I, I'm contemplating him in my next set of picks. There's no doubt. There's no lie about that. I, I will consider him. So, uh, so right after him, we've got a couple guys that are around pick 210 to 11. So we're talking. Um, kind of the 14th, 15th round, a 15 teamer. Uh, Tyler O'Neill is another guy that's moving teams, moving from St. Louis to Boston. He had a second straight rough year last year, um, both for injuries and for production when he was healthy. He had 231, nine homers, five steals, and 260 plate appearances. Not that few amount of uh, plate appearances. Really bad. Um, hard contact, still good. He actually lowered his strikeout rate. Um, you know, it's still not good. It's 25 and a half percent. Bumped his walks up a little bit. I think so much on O'Neill is just on his health. I mean, he's one of those guys that, like, his last time he had a fully healthy season, his only time, he was 35 home runs, 15 stolen bases. So we've seen some good. He got in the doghouse in St. Louis last year, oh. kind of his own doing. Like, he he dogged it pretty good around third base that one time. So, like, he did some of his own doing, but he and Marmol did not see eye to eye. But I don't like how Marmol handled, handled that one, though. I don't either. like that he handled it publicly. I thought that, you know, yeah. it's kind of you pull him aside and do it. Uh, the move to Boston should help. Uh, good place to hit. Um, especially for you, a righty bat, especially for a righty bat. Uh, I like O'Neill more than Kelnick. I, I think I do too. Uh, unfortunately, O'Neill just went like three picks before me, so that's <laughs> not an option for me. Um, although I will say playing time is not as guaranteed as you might think. There's a good article in The Athletic about this, uh, talking about like Raffaella in center field is easily their best defensive center fielder, and it's not even close. And Boston has had some tra- tragic terrible terrific defense not terrific a terrorizing defense you know terrific can mean two different things i guess so you could say it's terrific but um it's the in the negative sense though jaron duran is a bad defensive center fielder they would prefer him to be a left fielder uh or you know and uh, because his right field is kind of tricky actually in fenway too will your bray who might be playing in right field if yeah. if rafaela is ready and playing center field because he's easily their best defensive center fielder all of a sudden, Duran and O'Neill could be splitting time in left field with Yoshida playing DH. Now, things tend to get sorted out, yeah. but Rafael and Rafaela could start the year in the minors, and that even might be the most likely scenario. Doesn't mean he finishes the year in the minors, though. It doesn't mean, mean that uh, they're going to put up with a slump or nagging injury or a, a, you know. Alleged, alleged hustle issues, or in this case, it was an actual hustle issue. It wasn't alleged. I get that. Uh, point is. There, there's there's a scenario out there where O'Neill is a, a part-time player, a platoon player of some sort, and guess what? He's on the wrong side of a platoon, even though it's the right side of the ballpark. Um, you know, you love hitting right, righties hitting in Fenway, but 
he's got to earn that spot spot is basically what i'm getting at here um in the 200s that might be a risk as well worth taking uh i like him better than kelnick too but it's not by a lot yeah i think he's got a pretty good runway to start at least i agree with you if he does struggle something happens maybe he loses it but uh, I think in this range, he's got the most upside. And, you know, the 15th round, you know, give me someone that went 34-15 in 2021, not that long ago. Um, but health is a huge issue. He's uh, mm-hmm. he's very tightly wound, as we know. He's yoked. He's really strong. Um, has tended to not work out for him in terms of staying on the field. Another guy at the exact same price in the outfield in Toronto is, uh, is Dalton Varsho. Um, obviously, his ADP has crashed significantly, but mostly that most of that is because he lost his catcher eligibility. He was yeah. – uh, he was popular last year, you know, speed power because he had catch eligibility, hard to find that a catcher. Did have 20 home runs and 16 stolen bases, but hit 220. Um, hard contact is a big issue for him last year. It was 36% uh, hard yeah. hit rate last year. That's a really, like, that's really low. That's significantly below average. His barrel rate dropped 3%. He just did not hit the ball very well last year. His bad up hurt. He hit 256. Back to back years under 270 for a guy that, you know, has some speed. That's kind of surprising, but. You look at his stat cast page, it's ugly. There's nothing over the 53rd percentile on his page. It is uh, it is really unimpressive. Not even middling. It's just bad. His expected batting average, expected WOBA, both under 20th percentile. Um, as I look deeper at Varsho, I found uh, I found not a lot to get excited about. Uh, and I, I was a little bit surprised by that. I thought that uh, he'd be someone I maybe would like for a bounce back, and I actually really don't. Yeah, I thought I would too. I, I don't know. I mean, still could steal 20 bases or so he could go 2020 i mean i think i've got him for 21 14 so i'm not even that far off but hitting 230 while doing so i mean again it's that that's the thing uh we talked about cj abrams i think last week and about how his stat cast our outlooks you know discussed his stat cast page as quote unquote icy blue love that <laughs> i love the phraseology there but Varsha is kind of cut out of that cloth a little bit without the the, the proper uh position qualification there yeah, it's just, do you think that, like, how locked in is his playing time in, in Toronto? I guess they don't really have a ton of outfielder types. Uh, I mean, they're right. starting, what, uh, obviously Springer, but then Kiermaier in center, Varsho in left, Justin Turner's DH and I play the outfield. They don't have a really lot of uh, outfielders ready to come up. I guess the playing time is probably pretty good for a little bit until they maybe dip into the minors a little bit. Scott, they have Isaiah Kiner Falefa. He could play the out. No, just I couldn't even finish that. He's uh, already playing. He's already playing third base, right? <laughs> no, but they have Escobar. They have a Spinal. They're loaded. Seriously, this was supposed to be. Remember when Toronto had a fearsome lineup? Yes. It, after the, after the top four, it's just not really there at the moment. I know that. Uh, I know Danny Jansen. We're talking about him in a little bit. Is good when he plays, but after I mean the front four is awesome. But after that, I mean, and, and that's calling Justin Turner awesome. He's 39 years old um yeah after that it's not as uh not quite as fearsome as we thought it was yeah and, and varsho is kind of a depends on what you need sort of guy like if you need to take an upside chance on stolen bases then i'd consider yeah. him here but if you're needing power and hitting average then i'd look elsewhere like i almost would rather have a guy that bad batting but hits the ball really hard and strikes out too much because i feel like you're at least maybe you can maybe run in some hot streaks run into a season where he's hot Varsha isn't hitting hard. Like I just, I, I just, I, I struggle taking guys like that. Yeah, I do too. Down after these guys, we've got two uh, utility onlys who have crashed down ADP. Also, that's a, kind of a common theme here. Uh, Byron Buxton is about pick two eighteen in Minnesota. Eloy Jimenez is about pick two twenty eight in Chicago. Both utility only. Um, start with Buxton. I mean, again, another injury martyr. That's six straight years under 100 games. I know one of those was the COVID year, but still, the other five years were not, and they had under 100 games. Um, the K gains that we all liked in 2022, the made in 2021, are fully gone now. He's back at the 31 and a half percent. Bad strikeout rate the last couple of years. 14 percent swing strike rate. Ugly numbers there. Um, another one of those guys, though. His his hard contact is really impressive. You look at the stack page, a lot of red. And then you look at the at the strikeout stuff. It's a lot of bright. It's a lot of bright icy blue, as you call it. Mm-hmm. Still really fast, ninety fourth percentile. He has said in spring training he wants to run again. Obviously, he's going to say that. Who knows what happens there with his injuries? He sounds like he's going to play center field. You know, if he can stick there, he gets outfield eligibility pretty quickly. You don't have to worry about the UT only. Um, are you back in on Buxton uh, this year? I haven't been yet, and my projection is not getting there. I only have him for eighty three games um so kind of hard to blame you though like that's yeah. kind of what he does yeah uh you know he, he did start in center field on friday so he'll get 
outfield eligibility, possibly, probably. I mean, in season, you need 10 games. That should You should get there. Um, I, and and you, you get there pretty quick. I mean, conceivably, yeah. you, you're healthy earlier in the year. That's when he's going to be playing outfield. You could get there by, you know, I don't know, April 15th or April 20th or something. Yeah. I want to see him run in spring training, and I, you probably won't because it's Minnesota, too. Keep in mind. Yeah. Now, Rocco Baldelli does not – is no David Bell. You're 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 not going to get permanent green light even with Buxton. Buxton got hurt stealing bases before in the past. He was nine for nine on the base pass last year. Yeah. In fact, he's only been caught once in the last three. So it's not you know he's really good at it. He just needs to do it you know do it more often, but not get hurt while doing so. That's the problem. Uh, and I, I think the issue is I think we all like well if he's healthy he'll be great. He had two twenty four and two oh seven last two years, so that's not fully locked in either. Obviously the power was huge. He's only had one good average year, Scott. Yeah, Once. but at least he hit like 260s, 250s, even though in the bad average years, last two years, 204 and 207. I mean, it's, it's yeah. pretty. Yeah. And when you strike out 31% of the time, it's, uh, that happens with you. A couple, a couple bad things go against you and you're, uh, it's a lot of at bats. You're not doing much. Yeah. I mean, I, it's not hard to see the upside. If the price drops through the floor and it has on occasion, then I'll, I'll consider it. But it's also the DH only thing is also, it's a, it's a limiter. Uh, I, I'm uh, I'm in at the price. I think that uh, at pick two twenty five, whatever this is, two twenty. I think okay. you can you can get ninety games that can work. If he gets an injury, I'm not gonna. It's not gonna kill me to drop someone I took in the fifteenth round. I think the the power upside is clearly there. I'm I'm hesitant on the on the stolen base upside. I just don't think. I, don't, I if I were them, they're already Minnesota. I just wouldn't have him run very much. But he's a guy that can hit. Uh, you know, if he plays, he puts you on a thirty five home run pace. I don't think he's gonna hit thirty five home runs. He will play enough. But I think he's gonna. He's, a, he's low enough now in, in drafts that I think that I'm willing to, if I get him for three months, I can stomach that. I think it'll be a, yeah. at least a power laden three months. And it's just, you, you just have to be comfortable tying up your UT. Are you more likely to take Buxton in a 15 or a 12? It's a good question. Um, I think, I think probably kind of even, I think the Buxton's going to get outfield eligibility quickly enough. So I don't really think it, it impacts me that much. I'd probably be more willing to take him at 12 because I think he's more easy to replace, honestly. It's just like mm-hmm. I'll always be able to find an outfielder or a hitter in a 12 or in a 15 as we we as we know very well. The, that that extra, you know, extra, what is that? 90 players? Is that the right math? Yeah. The, um, extra, ni- the extra 90 players makes a gigantic difference. It does. It does. Um, so I think I'll take him. I Like tomorrow I might take him uh, in the 15 because I think I can replace him a lot easier, like you said. It just it doesn't. It's just at the same time, yeah. I, I can I can just fab a hit or two. I think that's the other thing too. I don't have to carry it necessarily on my bench to replace yeah. him. But I and I think I, that we we've always dreamed for the upside, but it was always in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth round. In the fifteenth round, I can just uh, I can stomach if it doesn't work a lot easier. Yeah, um, you know, I I I understand the imp- impulse to not want to run. I think the opposite is true. I'm like you you treated him with kid gloves and he still got hurt. Screw it. Let him play center field and let him run. Let him do his thing at least. That's the way I approach it. There, uh, that he's more valuable to the Twins going all out for half a season than two thirds and two thirds of a season. I guess I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I'd probably let him go on that. Uh, Uncle Ted asks Carlos Correa or Byron Buxton. Give me Buxton. At least he could do something. Yeah, um, give me give me Buxton too. Funny, our, our friend Peter Shanky noted that uh, Kyle Tucker. We're talking about Byron Buxton has the highest steal percentage. Kyle Tucker's number four. Cal Tucker must really be good at stealing bases because he's actually a uh, 33rd percentile sprint speed. I was stunned when I saw that number on Tucker. That's insane. He must get really good jumps. Or doesn't, yeah, doesn't run well first there, but it meant to be just a really smart, really good stolen base. He just never gets caught and always steals. And uh, I just, I was shocked when I look how, uh, how his sprint speed was down the list. Although there were some players that were questioning that sprint speed. Uh, I know Starling Marte was like way down. He's like, yeah, I'm the fastest guy on the team by far. And uh, he was like seventh on his team in, in sprint speed. So, but maybe, it, you yeah. know how it's measured though, too. It's, it's like, like first to third and second to home, right? Something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. So he's dogging in is what he's trying to say. Yeah. He's this Tyler O'Neill is probably low <laughs> in the sprint speed too. Uh, Eloy, uh, right below him uh, at util- utility only another, but a guy that uh, I would assume probably sticks at utility only. I don't think they want yeah. Eloy to play outfield. He just gets hurt Agreed. when he plays out there. Um, only played 120 games last year. Another year he got hurt, uh, but he was just kind of dull in those games. He was 18 home runs, 64 RBIs, hit 272. That didn't kill you, but uh, you know, not what you expected. His hit, his hard hit rate was still really good, but dropped 8%. He was 55% the year before, kind of crazy. Barrel rate fell 5%. He definitely hit less uh, balls less hard last year than he did the, the prior year. Uh, just kind of a blah year. Maybe he was never healthy. Who knows there with him? 
Uh, he chases a lot. Massive drop in ADP down to 228 or so. Uh, but, you know, still has some power upside and it goes with a good batting average, which you don't get a lot of that, especially down here. Um, I was going to ask you, Eloy or Buxton. We talked enough about Buxton. Where are you on, uh, on Eloy at the moment? I think I'm higher than Buxton, but again, I mean, it, the, the, the absolute pure zero in stolen bases is the, the thing that it's the other big difference. Has it's, never had one. Never. Yeah. Never. Um, there's zero chance of that happening too. He, he did steal in the minors a little bit. One year he actually had eight. It just shows everybody can steal in the minors at some point. Uh, but yeah, I just, I still can't flush out the memory of how he hurt himself in spring training, trying to rob a home run uh, and how that ruined the season for him. And that it, it really changed the course of his career actually, because he was, you know, 2000, the, the COVID year, he had an 891 OPS played 55 out of 60 games. And then he gets hurt in spring training in 2021. He hasn't been the same player since. Uh, he was good in the second half of 2022, Scott. I had him that year. Um, yeah. And he, 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 was he was frustrating early and clutch late to the point where I was like, oh, I'm all in this, this past year. And then I was, I was uh, all I was all in this past year, too. And it just he was a different hitter. He was not. Uh, I mean, you look at that 2022, 16 home runs in half a season, essentially. I mean, he was a 30 home run pace guy and hit 295. I'm still interested. Obviously, you can't do uh, you can't do Buxton and Eloy. If you get down here, you got to pick one. You don't want to start with two utility only guys. Even mm -hmm. though Buxton's going to get out for, you just don't want to risk that if he just starts DHing. But um, probably depends on the team build. But I think I'm a Buxton. Yeah. I'm Buxton over Eloy a little bit, just in a vacuum at the moment. I'm probably the opposite, but not flag plant opposite. I'm just like, I'm and I'm not flag plant opposite either. I yeah. just uh, I'm kind of a. Uh, if, if I'm getting down here, I'm kind of okay taking – if one of them lasts a little bit longer, I'm kind of okay taking a shot on them. But I think they will – I'll tell you uh, what. I will if, take shots on them in, in drafts. I'll tell you what. If, you, if you've if you gotten some of those elite stolen base guys early, then Eloy is a target. Yeah, he really works out If you've well, got cause... Bobby Witt or Corbin Carroll or you know, Acuna, you know, we'll see about Acuna, uh, let alone someone like Estuary Ruiz or anything like that, then absolutely Eloy is like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. High average power guy this late, let's try it. Well, I got a I got a high power, probably not uh, probably low average guy next. Jack Sawinski in Pittsburgh uh, had mm -hmm. 534 plate appearances last year, 26 home runs, 13 stolen bases. I don't think I, I predicted it, but he is an 81st percentile sprint speed guy. He's actually pretty fast. Uh, a massive strikeout right guy. We talked about Buxton earlier. We talked about Kelnick. He's right in that range. 32 percent last year. He will kill the batting average. He hit 224 last year. Uh, but man, you talk about hard hit rates. Got a 15.7 percent barrel last year. Huge barrel rate for Swinsky. Walks a lot. Um, he feels like Jack Cuss to me with a with the, with the speed though, like the good eye, a lot of strikeouts, ton of pop. But obviously Jack Cuss couldn't uh, couldn't run or catch. By the way, Jack Cuss could, could not catch um, a baseball. Um, so he's got you know he's one of those guys. Stat cast page looked nice. A lot of hard contact, but you know the huge strikeout issues bring his expected batting average way down in the fourth percentile. Uh, but a speed power guy down here at pick 231, um, I think it's the right build, a strong batting average team. I think he works pretty well. I have him already in three teams. Uh, like I think That's a good D sign. Yeah, DC, uh, I think Scarf, um, and then also an NFPC 50. So, yeah, uh, I, I he... I you just you just got to realize he is a massive batting average risk. Twice has had over twenty nine slumps in his career. Um, he was he was one streaky dude last year. He was, um, but the price is right, and there there's certainly leagues where he even gets discounted below his ADP. Obviously, I, I feel like you know he when I get him, I, I feel pretty good about two ninety seven is his max bid in the last three max pick in the last three days. So all over the map with this guy, 90, 97 pick spread in the last three days. Most people don't have that big of a spread, but could hit fifth in a lineup. That is not a pirates lineup. We're used to like the front six, of this lineup looks like it might be kind of interesting. It's cromulent. Yes. God, I like, you love that. You love that word. It's so I do. I yeah. do. Um, so but, I mean, I think that we're excited about O'Neill Cruz. Brian Reynolds is really rock solid. We're excited about Cabrian Hayes. I think a little bit more this year. Um, McCutcheon, who, who knows? But uh, you know, Henry Davis is exciting. You know, former obviously mm -hmm. number one pick. Uh, that front six is like I don't know how great it'll be, but it, I'll, I'll flip it on when they're hitting. Like it's a it's a, it's a watchable front six, which we haven't had in Pittsburgh in quite a while. Yeah, ballpark's not going to help them. Weather's not going to help them. Yeah. Uh, th these are limiting factors. Life in the central divisions, you, you know, but. Yeah. Uh, you don't get a lot of 16% barrel rates down here, though. No, 
no, you yeah. don't. So he's a target. I did sneaky ads with Allen last week, and we did outfielders after pick 200. He was prominently featured. Oh, nice. Good good plug right there. That was nice. Thank you. While we're talking about it, give me a quick rotowire.com slash pod plug. Sure. Okay. Uh, as always, we like to let people have a taste of Rotowire before they subscribe if they want. It's a, it's a process that's worked for us for 20 years. You get a taste of Rotowire. Hopefully, you want to subscribe. You don't need to commit to a credit card to do it. Rotowire.com slash pod. Put in a valid email address. Off you go. Free free look behind the paywall for a couple of days. Projections, strategy articles, cheat sheets, our projected starters grid, depth charts are updated on, on the regular. Um, other companies use our depth charts. They're that good. The other companies use our projected starters grid. They're, it's the best in the business. So check it out. Rotowire.com slash pod. Hopefully you want to subscribe. Let's talk about a couple of infielders. We talked to hit a bunch of outfielders, some UT only guys. Uh, mm-hmm. Michael Garcia in Kansas City. A solid debut last year, 272, 23 stone bases. Uh, power was deficient, though. Only four home runs, 515 plate appearances. Uh, I was pretty shocked as I was flipping through Garcia. I'm like, only four home runs, kind of a kind of a weak guy, not much hard contact. 50.6% hard hit rate. I was stunned by that. It just uh, hits a lot of ground balls. Uh, only a, a 3.9% barrel rate, so not a lot of fly balls with those hard hit rates. Uh, 27% fly ball rate hurt the power, as does the park. But he also had a crazy low 4% uh, home run for fly ball. Like, that's something that's going to regress back up, you'd think. Uh, I think mm-hmm. Michael's getting popular. I haven't heard a lot of buzz about him recently. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be, uh, you know, the third base is a, is a good spot here. Pick 232. I got to think more home runs come. So you got to think the stolen bases are still there. Kent State likes to run. Uh, I like Garcia at the price. Yeah. He needs to get uh, a little bit of a the Andy Diaz treatment um where he's got the hard hit rate just now yep. needs to get some elevation homes um I, I think it could happen uh and third base is not as deep as you might think so you know it, again you're taking the risk that he goes cabrian hayes on you and he doesn't hit for power for five years and then finally does and it's 16 um yeah that could that could still happen but i i think he, he's fun because if you're light on stolen bases well he he's definitely a sneaky ad there yeah, I'd like to see one some lineups and kind of as we get closer to spring training. I know that uh, you look at roster resource; they have him hitting ninth in the, in the Rose Lamp. That would be a, that'd be a problem. I don't want him in there. But if he hits, you know, they move guys around a little bit. Uh, who knows what they do with MJ Melendez? We're talking about in a second. Actually, he's probably leading off against righties. Maybe Garcia leads off against lefties and then moves around. But uh, I don't want to get hit ninth in the Rose lineup. But I, I do like Garcia otherwise, for sure. Uh, and it, a good point, uh, again, by Pete in the chat. Uh, finding stolen bases at corner is not always easy, especially right. late. Yeah. Right. Just means, though, if you're getting if you're getting your seals from Michael Garcia and you're using a corner spot, and that means you're getting power from middle infield uh, or power from catcher, or power from somewhere. Remember, you need to average over 20 stolen bases, I mean, 20 home runs per slot, per offensive slot, to hit your targets if you want. So if you're getting five homers out of Michael Garcia, it means you got to get 35 out of someone someone else uh just Jeez. to make up for that and, and you're and you're rostering two catchers so you're probably making up for other else's too somewhere along the way yeah for sure all always a big puzzle which makes uh back have a drafts fun which is why we're hitting this stuff yep. uh, another infielder uh junior Caminero in tampa bay uh third base shortstop for the rays he was a monster last year in a and double a 31 home runs only 117 games uh, the, interesting enough, the K rate was really high at single A, and then he actually fixed it at double A. It was only 70% at double A. Swing strike rate is still 12%, so there's still some swing and miss in his game. Probably going to have some K issues the first time around the majors. But uh, ADP is 255. A, do you think he makes the team out of camp? B, if he doesn't, um, how soon does he have to come up for him to earn that ADP for you? That was a hot-button topic on Friday night when we did the broadcast for the AL Labor Auction. Jim Bowden thinks it'll be fewer than 81 games. Um, that oh, gonna that's really, really low. Okay. They're going to really play the service time game with him. So he get, it's not just for arbitration purposes, but maybe another year of control purpose. Um, I hope that's incorrect. But I will say, look what you, you just look how they've acted. They added, they traded for Jose Caballero. They signed Ahmed Rosario. Uh, I mean, yes, that could be the whole. Yeah, but Vernon Wells was there and Bobby Abreu was there in, a, in, in Anaheim and that didn't stop Mike Trout. Right. Um, Caminero is that level of prospect. And, you know, they're, they're, they're obviously he could just bang, bang the door down. That's possible. Uh, I hope that's true. I actually have him in, in scarf already. I have him in a keeper in a score sheet league and somewhere else too. I love him. Uh, but it's the Rays, So be prepared to be a little frustrated with this. 
Yeah, and the weird thing is with the Rays, like usually you look and like, oh, they got so many players they're platooning. Uh, I've mentioned it before. Like after the first five, it just, there's not much in that lineup. Like they could really use one more bat. You're looking at, uh, you know, Aranda, Jose Siri, who strikes out every other at bat, Caballero, mm. a catcher. The bottom of that lineup's actually kind of gross right now for a team that is expected to compete and get 10, which they always do every year, won a lot of games last year. Uh, the bottom of that lineup is not, not sexy. That, that rotation's kind of, I mean, the, uh, the the rotation's a little gross too right now. Yep. But, I We've talked about it before. I'm taking the under on the Rays, and I know that I'm uh, just they like to make me look them. bad. But, yeah, blind faith works here. The bullpen's going to be probably really good. But um, I don't like this team right now. I think that they're going to struggle. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I, I hear you. Uh, I still – we have a bet already, so I'm fine. I'm blind faithing them. I'll, they'll find a way. You know, we'll find out that uh, you know some of the, the the guys that they have are already like brilliant, and we you know besides sure. Yeah. Um, it's usually on the pitching side where we find the the surprises. Sometimes the hitting though too. Like Rene Pinto could be like a top ten catcher. You, it could be one of those sort of scenarios. Like, oh yeah, what were we thinking? Curtis Mead, he just needed his chance all along. Come yeah. on, uh, I'm not on board with the Jose Siri experience, uh, but we'll see. Couple more hitters here before we move on to some pitchers. Um, both in Kansas City, uh, Nelson, Nelson Velasquez. We talked about Michael Garcia, but Nelson Velasquez and MJ Melendez, both in Kansas City, both appear to be uh, guys who are going to play. Uh, you know, almost every day. We'll see how it works out with Velasquez. But Velasquez only had 180 plate appearances last year, hit 17 home runs. <laughs> Another guy we talked about. We talked about a lot of guys like this, but a lot of stolen, a lot of strikeouts. But man. You talk about barrel rates, 21.4% barrel rate last year. Granted, limited 180 plate appearances, but man, the dude mashed when he was up. Uh, you know, his X slug is elite when you look at stat cast. Appears to be the DH at the moment. Feels like a pretty good stab for power, but uh, you got MJ Melendez here too. You know, he was catcher eligible and hyped up last year and didn't do a lot. Hit uh, 16 home runs, but only hit 235. Um he was a little bit better in the second half, though. I feel like he just really struggled early. He hit a 68. His WRC plus in the uh, second and the first half was 68. He was really bad. People uh-huh. started dropping him in 12 teamers. It was 128 in the second half. He dropped his strikeout percentage 3% in the second half. I really saw some gains for him. Uh, I like uh, his hard hit rate's 91st percentile. Uh, average exit velocity, 96th percentile. He's picked 288 right now. He's a big target for me down here at the you know 19th, 20th round. Um, I like Melendez a lot as someone who hit the ball hard and I think kind of figured some stuff out midseason last year. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's a question of like, who you know, Melendez is guaranteed playing time too. Velasquez kind of has to earn it a little bit yeah. more. I feel Melendez like might, Melendez might lead off against righties too. Yeah. Uh, it's, I think we look at him in the same way you look at Varsha. Well, he's never going to get catcher eligibility again. Well, let's just downgrade yeah. him. Um, and that might be a mistake. Uh, we'll see. I mean, Royal the Royals being the Royals, it's still not a super attractive lineup, even with them spending some money. But here, here's the scenario: Melendez returns to value. He's that second half guy. Vinny P comes back and is raking. Michael Garcia is for real. Bobby Witt does his thing. Sal is healthy. All of a sudden, you got yourself a decent core, yeah. at least, which is something that Casey hasn't had since they won the World Series or the year after they won the World Series, and they had another run to try to get close to the playoffs there. Velasquez is interesting to me too. I mean, he's a guy who just d- yeah. didn't have, it was just totally blocked in Chicago. Sarah Sanchez was talking, I think talking about him when she was on our podcast last year and you know, he rakes when he gets a chance, he just doesn't get a chance. And when his chances are so spotty and you're looking over your shoulder, it's tough to perform. And in KC, he got a real chance. Finally, Edward Oliveris has no idea what you're talking about. When <laughs> you're at KC. Um, As he hangs out in Pittsburgh now. Yeah. So my question for you is when, so we're gonna have a lot of games where Perez, Sal Perez plays first, right? Freddie Fermin's going to play catcher. Does that move past Cantino to DH? And then suddenly Velasquez is looking at a bunch of games where he can't play. Like, how do you think that works out? Yeah. I mean, I, I do think he's at risk, but if he's hitting bombs, it plays, you know, it takes care of itself. Yeah. I think if he's, if he's hitting, they'll find a way to get him in there. I just think they're going to get, we're going to get some squeezes when, when Sal plays yeah. first page, which it sounds like it's going to be a bunch. It could be a if it's a pre squeeze, that's the problem. Yeah. If he gets that chance early and then you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they're both interesting. I do really like, uh, I think I probably prefer Melendez. I think the playing time is more locked in. I do like the gains he made in the second half. I tend to agree with you, though. Um, real quick here, because I do want to get some pitchers. Uh, we talked about Matt Chapman earlier uh, going to the Giants. 
strange, strange year for Chapman. He had 240, but had uh, he only had 17 home runs. Career high hard hit rate, 56%, 17% barrel rate. It's almost impossible for to do that and only hit 17 home runs. He didn't pull a lot of balls. I think he was hitting a lot of barrels to like dead center and right center and just yeah. wasn't working out. Like his pull rate was down 8%. Um, he had 49% fly balls. You take the barrel rate, all those fly balls, hard hit rate, it's shocking. You think like, ah, 32 home runs. He had 17. 9.9% um, home run for fly ball really hurt him. The hard hit numbers are insane on his on his baseball savant profile. Mm -hmm. 98th percentile higher in uh, hard hit rate, barrel rate, and exit velocity. Uh, this is a weird year. I don't know if it's just kind of who he is and he's just pulling the wrong or hitting the ball the wrong part of the park, or maybe he's going to regress up to a, a really good hitter again. Uh, I don't know what to do with Chapman. So two things. One, he did put the lie uh, that, to the notion that the ballpark changes were going to be extremely helpful for uh, Toronto hitters. The they opposite was most certainly true. Yeah. Um, there were sight line issues. There were, although it's not interesting, the barrel rate didn't change that much, but the results on the barrels did to a negative, much negative effect. That's, you know, he doesn't get, he gets out of Toronto, but guess what? Where do you th guess where the it's the worst place to hit the ball in San Francisco? You don't you don't want to hit barrels to right center in San Francisco? Triples alley for a slow hitter? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, but but balls he pulls should be pretty good there, right? I mean, it hurts he's lefties not, more, if he's right? not pulling enough though, that's my yeah. point. Yeah, I mean, that's true. <laughs> Rob D. Pietro's like, hey, I'm called dead pull hitter for a reason. You know, I'm calling that. You know, let's find guys that can pull the ball, pull yeah. pulled fly balls. We had uh, John Legaza so on uh, talking about that on the podcast on Thursday, big John congrats again on the FSWA award. Uh, and you know, he, he was talking, I think it was in the context of Lane Thomas, we were talking about where the like Thomas's uh, barrels were almost all pulled fly balls too. And he was great on those. And that, that, is why he's kind of still bullish on Lane Thomas. I'm, I hope I'm kind of summarizing his his argument properly. But point is, the, the takeaway is that you can be excited about him in part because of his pull rate and what he does on pull balls, pulled balls. Yeah. The other guy right in that uh, target is Isak Paredes, who had a 6% barrel rate but hit 31 home runs because he pulled the ball 55% of the time. Yeah, the Rays are good of, at that. A yeah. lot of pulled fly ball barrels, and those turn into home runs. It's a, yep. it's a good point. Uh, you want to flip some pitchers here now? Sure. Let's, Let's talk some pictures. Uh, first, a note from our sponsors from the Blue Wire Network here. Uh, Jeff, let's start with some pictures. Uh, we'll go past pick 200 again with the pitchers. Uh, first guy I want to talk about is someone that had a ton of buzz last year. He was popular in drafts. He was popular when he got called up. Uh, then not so popular when he uh, did not pitch well. It was Brandon Fott in Arizona. Uh, 572 area, 141 whip. Uh, the Ks uh, for the minors didn't translate. He was only 22.5% K rate. Uh, command is pretty good, though. 6% walk rate. Uh, had a big home run issue. Uh, he had that in the minors, too. So that's a bit of a problem for him going forward. Uh, swing strike rate is 11.3%. So a decent number there. That was a lot higher in the minors. I think we're going to see more of that. But um, he turned it around. He was a uh, 19% K minus walk in the second half uh, in 70 innings. Had some really good playoff moments. We saw him pitch well in the playoffs. Maybe figured some stuff out. Um, you know, stat cast page is pretty to be ugly because that takes the whole season to account. Uh, what do you feel about him? Like, do you, are you buying the second half stuff? Or are you like, he needs to figure out the home runs? His ADP is about 205. So, um, you know, cheap enough to find out, but expensive enough where it's gonna, he's got to be pretty decent for him. You know, that's a 15 pick. You want that guy to be in your lineup and start most weeks. So, yeah, I wanted to call him like a poor man's grace in Rodriguez. And I kind of still do, but even, with his like you know, when he got called back up in July, July 22nd was his first start after his demotion from there to the end of the regular season. That was a uh, 70 innings. He still gave up 13 homers. Long balls yeah. are still going to be an issue for him. And uh, all, I mean, always, even in the minors, you look, it's always over one home run per nine and, yeah. and usually over one and a half too. It's not necessarily disqualifying, but it's, it, there's a whole lot of Lance Lynn in him. Uh, that, that, that's kind of the, comp i'm going for more Which some years worked yeah exactly and then there's last year uh yeah. and then he gives up yeah 40 home runs he was a stud in the playoffs and i think that's in everybody's mind yeah. a little bit there and it should yeah, be playoff, they, playoff yeah, results matter for sure yeah yeah i think the home run i mean it, it's and it's not just unlucky i mean he had a 12 percent barrel rate so he gives up a lot of a lot of rockets uh, I think I'm I think I'm in for a stab at the price. You know, it probably depends where my team is, but like is my sixth starter. I like the uh like the potential upside. He's obviously a pedigree prospect guy. Everybody loved him before. Um mm -hmm. I think uh, you know, not a target for me, but someone in my in that range. I need a pitcher, uh, someone I consider for sure. 
Yeah, in the last three days, his ADP is 10 picks higher than his overall ADP. Uh, it's 197 in the last three uh, days. Okay, so. so making a move. Yeah, making a move. Uh, not, But it's not like a crushing move either. Right. Um, some of that's like others dropping down. Like Kodai Singo is right above him now as opposed to 100 picks earlier. Yeah. Still should be lower than that. You and I have discussed that at length. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Font will be on some of my rosters. Uh, I, yeah, I, I still think need me to too. Get I prefer to get them lower end of my range, but there'll be there'll be opportunities where I'm going to need them. Uh, drop it down a little bit. Uh, Christopher Sanchez in Philadelphia. He's about uh, about pick two between two thirty and two forty, right in there. Uh, a really nice twenty twenty three. Ninety nine innings, three four four one oh five. Really impressive K minus uh, walk, mostly because of the walks. He had a four percent walk rate last year. It's weird, though, because his walks were an issue for him in the minors. You don't really see guys that come to the majors and suddenly figure out their walk rate. It's usually the other way around as you're mm-hmm. kind of, you know, scared of major league hitters working around guys. But he had some walk issues in the minors, did not in the majors. A um, few too many hard hit balls. Home runs are a problem, but a really nice ground ball rate. So you, know, you hope he can limit that. He's a 57% ground baller last year. I don't think he'll be – I mean, obviously, I don't think we're going to be as good as 2023. That worked out pretty well for him. Um, but – I feel like his ADP is not really reflecting how well he pitched last year. I think you're right. I think I was horn swoggled in early uh, trading season by Doug Dennis of baseball HQ in uh, the uh, XFL league uh, where he got him as a bit of a throw in in a deal where I was kind of retooling. And I feel like a, a, a gesture donning the gestures motley as Tim Schuler from Roto would like to say, but uh, much better on the road than at home. And that bothers me. Uh, you don't like guys that don't pitch as well at their home ballpark, but it's all, it's mostly because he was amazing on the road. 208, 088. Uh, whereas at home is 393, 110. Oddly enough, he, he had 73 home innings and only 26 on the road. That's a pretty weird split. You know, that that's not going to happen in nature. That is a weird split. Yeah. Uh, just destroys the souls of left-handers last year. 133 against him. Uh, righties hit 260 with, uh, with, 15 homers against him. So he's got a platoon issue still too. Yeah. For me, it's really like how real are those walks. Cause if he's an a elite walk guy and elite ground ball guy, like that's yeah. a really nice combo, especially for whip. You saw his whip last year at one Oh five. Mm-hmm. You're getting a ton of ground balls, a ton of walks. You're kind of keeping out of big innings, stay out of trouble. You know, you may give up three hits in an inning of a run, but you're not giving up a, you know, a lot of big innings, a lot of balls off the wall. Um, I just, that 4% walk rate is not going to be the same, but you, is it going to be, Seven percent or ten percent? I think that makes a massive yeah. difference for Sanchez this year. I think you're going to Sanchez affect him there, and I think he's already climbing too. Again, that last three days, that ADP is up to two twenty two. So it's just yeah. for what take it for what it's worth. A little bit further down, uh, Taj Bradley at Tampa Bay. We have a couple of Tampa Bay guys on the list here. Uh, rough debut. Another guy with a rough debut. We talked about Brendan Fott earlier. Yeah, uh, Bradley was was, uh, was even worse. He was five five. Oh, I guess he was a little bit a little bit better. Fott was five seven two. Bradley was 5'5'9, 139 whip and 104 and, and two thirds innings. Uh, the K's were there with Bradley, though, which kind of makes this profile interesting to me. He's 28% strikeout guy, nearly a 20% K minus walk and about an 8.5% walk rate. Um, swing strike rate was uh, 11.3%, been a lot higher than minors. So maybe there's more coming there. Um, home runs were a problem again, kind of a common theme with some of the guys down here. He's 1.98 home runs per nine in, uh, in the majors. And then it was also a problem in Triple A. So hard conics a problem. He kind of profiles a little bit like fought with that. Uh, you know, the uh, maybe a few more strikeouts, but the home runs are a problem there. But man, this strike every time I every time I'm like, I don't want this dude. I look at the strikeout rate his first time through. Um, it's hard to find a strikeout, the strikeout profile like this deeper in drafts. He's picked 240 to, to 50, 240 to 250. It's hard to find strikeouts down here. And that that makes me intrigued with Bradley. Yeah, he it does. It's just can he get something besides the fastball to be a, an effective pitch? So he actually is, you know, sometimes young pitchers get pounded on their fastball. Uh, his fastball is actually pretty good. It's his other stuff, his other offerings that need work. Yeah, I just, uh, you, you hope he, it's one of those things you hope he works on and figures out in the offseason. Man, I just, every time I don't want to do it, I just, I, I think that uh, this is the kind of guy you take in the 16, 17 round because it doesn't work. <laughs> you can get rid of him. You can not use him. You can bench him. But if it works, it's going to, it feels like it could come pretty quickly. And you just, mm-hmm. like I said, you just don't get strikeouts down here. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, you know, of course, in contest leagues, you know, it's it's super important to get those yeah. late. So it segues well to our next guy here, um, Kyle Harrison in San Francisco, who uh, strikeouts are not a problem. He, his strikeout rate was 
thirty-five percent in his uh, in his quick time in the in the majors last year. But a guy that's a huge strikeout guy in the minors too has never had a problem mm-hmm. missing bats. The problem is his command. Um, walks are a huge issue. He had a sixteen percent walk rate in Triple A last year. Um, and that's in 65 innings. So what could I was pretty good in the majors last year? Only threw through 34 innings, but it was uh, it was seven and a half percent. And the 36 percent strikeout rate was in that was in AAA also. It was, his strikeout rate was lower, and his walk rate was lower in the majors. But um, has never had a K rate under 35 percent in the minors, uh, which is <laughs> kind of a wild number. It's a really big number for a starter. Um, you know who knows uh, who knows if the walks uh, if they if they go back to what he was in the minors because if they do, he'll be dead in the majors. Um, he appears to be a lock for the rotation, you know, unless they sign like two guys, but I still think he'd be in the rotation. Um, how do you feel about Kyle Harrison? ADP between 250 and 260. You know, he had 20 starts in triple A and had one win. You want to know why? Probably because he went three innings per start. Exactly. 65 and two thirds innings and 20 starts. Now, is that is some of that him throw a lot of pitches to the walking yeah. guys or some the Giants are also babying him a ton, right? I think it's a little bit of both, um, and that bothers me. But man, I mean, it just—it's an—it's a really excellent point because I'm looking at his major league, and he never—he went—he went six once in the majors. Yeah, it's we need wins. I, I think you know he might be a guy that help, gets really helped by uh, you know the defense. Although he, he's more of a fly ball pitcher than some yeah. of their other pitchers, and so. you know strikeout rate, you need to throw innings for that. I mean, obviously you want that, but you need to throw innings for that to pay off too. Yeah, and didn't you know? Yeah, then, yeah. It's just like you got to watch out because like he had a hamstring injury the year before. I think he's been you know last year. He just he just seems like he's fragile and good. Good, good park. Yep. A lot of strikeouts. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Someone. Uh, oh, Pete said in the chat again. He's cheap. Like I just uh, maybe maybe it's just one of those things you just take in San Francisco and, and hope it works out because I think that. You know, pick two sixty again. Like you're just you're not risking very much for someone with some with some very clear upside. Yeah, I think that's right. That's right. I have rostered him once already. I'll take some chances. And again, San, you know, San Francisco is a huge factor there too. You're right. Peter's right about that. Um, next guy down here is someone I I really like. Is is Cutter Crawford in uh, in Boston? Looks like he's pretty much locked in the rotation too. He was solid last year. Four point oh four ERA, one one uh, one WHIP in 129 innings. The strikeouts were solid. He's got 12 and a half percent swing strike rate. Maybe he got more room to run with the strikeouts too. He dropped his walk rate under 7%. Another good sign there. Kind of is his second time uh, through the league. Um, you know, the bat up helped a little bit, but the strand rate wasn't great. So maybe mm-hmm. those evened out a little bit. Really good hard contact guy, under 35%. Barrel rate under 8%. Got a lot of good numbers here. He, he allows, a lot of, allows a lot of fly balls. Kind of the one thing here, you're like, in Boston, going to be some balls over the monster. So the home run issues will continue. But you look at like... You look at a guy with a Statcast page, you know, down here, 87th percentile XERA, 88th percentile expected batting average, K rate and walk rate over 66th percentile, so top third of the league there. The only real issue I see in this profile right now is the lack of ground balls. I mean, and you can mm-hmm. you, know, you can't have everything with someone at pick 260. Um, he's a big target for me. I know there's a lot of people that do like Cutter Crawford, but he's one of those guys that I probably will move up two two rounds, three rounds, something like that to try and get him because I know that people that will be doing the same thing. Uh, I really like this profile at the price. Wait, let me write that down so I can remember. Um, Crawford target moving up. Uh, Gen stat effect time coming up here again. Yeah, but, uh, I think there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of people that, are, that, that, that like Cutter. Boston is tricky too. Just trying to figure out roles. You figure Bayo, Giolito, Pavetta are set. Yeah, Crawford, Whitlock, Hauk are kind of like I, I. They're in the same bucket. I think Crawford is the better of that. The best I, of that I, bucket. I think Crawford's maybe like a a third of a bucket ahead of them. Okay. I can see it. Not a, not a whole bucket ahead, and not in the G Little Pavetta bucket. I think he's, and I think ba- I think Bayo's not fully in the G Little Pavetta bucket either. Maybe he probably is. He's probably uh, close. You think he's? You think he's locked think in? He can, I don't think he can relieve either. Is I think is the other issue. I think Bayo is just a starter. Um, yeah, that's that's true too. I, I mean, I, maybe I maybe it's just because I like Bayo a lot too. I don't know. There's a question in the chat. There's so many starters in this zone. Why waste a high draft pick on a starter? Because oh, you need these guys to you need these guys to work and to supplement your your aces in order to compete. Uh, and you're going to miss some guys down here. There's going to be some guys we talk about down here that we like that are going to bust. There's no doubt about it. In a 15 team league, there's only so many you can take. Too people. Are, there's a lot of people that are going to be a lot of on these guys. A lot of these guys. Not everybody does a lot of similar research we do. We're trying to under some gems, but you know a lot of other people are too. 
um, you've got to get these guys to work and your top guys to work to really, uh, to really mm -hmm. crush, uh, to crush pitching. Yeah. And everybody else can read these stats about these guys too. You're going to have to compete for these guys. Yep. 15 picks, you know, 15 no team leagues, even 12 and, team leagues. And it, you're going to need hitters in here. You're going to need a third closer in here. You can't just draft. You just, it doesn't work. People are, everybody else is going to want these pitches. We want starters too. So you just gotta, you know, you, you gotta hope you get two or three of these guys in the range. Yep. Yep. And, and you know, you're not playing in a league of adults. You're playing in a league of people that can read stats on the internet too. So it's just, you got to get them early, get some late. And if they don't, they listen to a lot of these podcasts where people that do find a lot of these stats too. Uh, what about, uh, what about Emmett Sheehan in, uh, in Los Angeles, uh, picked, uh, pitched about 60 innings, in the major this year, about 120 total across, uh, majors and the minors. Uh, the ratios were not great in the, in the major leagues, four, nine, two, eight. The whip was decent at one, one, nine. Strikeout is okay, but his swing strikeout was really good, 13.5%. So maybe some more strikeouts coming. Had a lot of big strikeout numbers in the minors. Uh, another guy, a lot of home run issues. He's at his 55, 54% fly ball rate. Like that's a concern right there. He's just always going to give some home runs. Um, but, you know, the uh, he does a lot of things well, but it's just that uh, the ground ball fly ball with Sheehan does worry me. Uh, where do you feel about him? Because obviously the team context here is really good. I think this is a guy that needs to learn. Um, like he has the, I just, he, he has that rising fastball and that's going to be giving up home runs by nature a little bit there. People catch up to it there. And I don't like that. He's got the general soreness, upper body soreness and won't be ready for overseas opening day, but maybe for domestic opening day yeah. and on a team that is, does not need to push anybody at any point this year or two. Yeah. Uh, just, I, you know, I, I, you know, he, he could be a stud or it could be Gavin Stone's a stud or it could be, you know, someone else so that, that that's the other. I, yeah. uh, I don't like the combination of fly ball and walks. Like if I can get mm -hmm. someone to get fly balls, but without the walks, I'm okay with that. I think fly balls and walks together. Like if you get rid of one of those, I'd be good with him, you know, with a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a thing that you can't not great at everything, but you get both of those. And I'm, uh, I'm concerned. The strikeouts look like they're going to be there, but I think the walks are too. He has had a, uh, a walk rate over 10% kind of every level of minor is a little bit higher mm -hmm. in some of those, some of those times. But I think those two together scare me enough that I'm probably just taking other guys in this range. Yep. Yep. Uh, I, I get you on that one there too. And I just, he, you want him to be able to take advantage of Bueller's absence the first month of the season, but if he's yeah. not ready for the bell and he's already behind the eight ball there, I, I just probably won't get him here a lot that often. A few more, uh, a few more late pitchers here before we jump out. We've hit a lot of guys so far on this podcast, but we've got four guys here in the three hundreds. I want to ask you about quick, kind of in the junior Camonero mode. You know, we don't know if it's going to be up, but uh, Paul Skeens, uh, the number one pick from last year at LSU, throws gas. Um, he only threw about six innings in the minors last year. Uh, what are your thoughts on how quickly the Pirates are be willing to move him through the system? Obviously, he's not starting the year, you know, on the Pirates. Probably a start year in Double A. Get him stretched out a little comfortable. His his ADP's pick three hundred though. Like that's a spot where you can hold, but not that long. Like is this 20th, 20th first round? You want somebody you're going to use? Uh, are you taking him here? Are you just moving? Uh, if he's someone else is taking him, you're going to let him have it. What do you do with schemes right right now in a redraft league? Obviously, dynasty. He's a monster. I'm just drafting him. I are think he, his upside. Wow. Is I did not. Uh, I did not think you're going to say that. I like it. Uh, I think he's. I think he's. You know, m maybe not Strasburg, but. That sort of vein, that sort I, of upside. I agree. I think he's like. I think. I think the floor is pretty darn good too. Yeah, I think so too. I think he'll be up and. Granted, setbacks happen, but I think he'll be up in pretty short order. What's What's pretty short order? May twenty seventh. That's pretty short order. I would. Uh, I'd probably take the. I don't know how you do over under with a date, but I'd probably take after. the later. Say uh, before or after. after. I would take the. I was gonna go later, but after is better. I would take the after on that. My only concern was me. I just don't know how much they push him. Like, is he going to come? Is he going to pitch like three, four innings in a game for a while? Like, what? Give any feel about how they stretch him out? Uh, I mean, no, but I think the, the minor league usage will kind of tell the tale. I mean, do they, if they do stretch, if they are limiting him to three innings at a time, then yeah, I'm going to be a little concerned because that means they'll probably limit him when they first call him up, too. Because if you're taking him in 2021, 22, you're taking him to hold him for at least a couple of months to see what happens, right? Yeah. You're doing it knowing that's going to happen. Yeah, I, I true. Uh, and in the in the chat, uh, Peter and Forrest Price both suggested Super Two is an issue. It is the Pirates, after all. That is a good point. That they are exactly the cheap ass organization that would still care about Super yeah. Two. Can't um, they just sign him to an extension and we move on from that? Like, come on, let's go. 
I mean, they have done that with some prospects before, but uh, I I still say just draft them. I'm still maybe this is. I like it. You surprised me with that. Yeah, I I, I think the price is it's after the twentieth round. It's fine. Yeah. Don't don't take him in the fifteenth round. But if and you're and you're right. If he's throwing two three innings for a month, I mean, twenty you can't drop him at that point. Yeah. Jordan Hicks, uh, pick 325 and ADP. I uh, actually you had a 333 right now. Uh, signed with the Giants, moving to the rotation. Um, pitch exclusively in relief last year. 65 innings of relief, 329, 136. Um, the strikeouts were good. They always are, but the, the swing strike rate's never good. It's a weird thing because he throws 104 miles an hour. Uh, but Jordan Hicks is a huge walk problem. Uh, 11%, never, 11 22% last year, never under 10%. He's good at avoiding hard contact. Everything he throws is hard and it moves. It's hard to hit him. The K's and the, and the ground balls are a really nice combo. He was a 58% ground ball guy last year. Um, how much do you think it translates to being a starter? You know, can he throw this hard being a starter? How do you feel about him moving from relieving rotation? Because I just I don't feel like he can he can't gas it out 102 for 90 pitches, right? I don't like it one bit. Okay. Uh I am not in on him. And if 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 it works, great. But I think these transitions frequently don't work. They, we, it's actually been tried with him in St. Louis, and it didn't work. He's had an injury history. He's got a command history. I, you know, I understand there is there's an upside there somewhere. Um, and it, it could be a really high ceiling. I think it's a very low floor, and I'm just not there for it. Um, I, I I'm not drafting him at that. I'm I, just pro- I can't believe he got 44 million. I know. And that's the I reason mean, was, why was, you would was, do it. It was right? four. It was four years. So I get like it's not that much a year, but that still contract still stuck out to me. Like he got paid a lot. Even if tomorrow they said, you know what, forget it. He's a reliever. He's still the third best reliever on the team. Duvall's still the closer, and he's awesome. Yeah. Tyler Rogers is still pretty darn good. I I just I'm not drafting him. I I, I could be wrong on this one here. Um, I, aggressively so. I understand. There is a scenario there where I'm completely off my rocker and it works out. I just most of the, most of the time these transitions from bullpen to, to starter don't work out. I am uh, I am fully on board with you on this one. I am uh, I'm not taking him. I have no interest. I don't think it's going to work. I think he's going to be some short outings. I think there's going to be some bad outings. I think there's going to be some six walk outings. I just uh, I'm not doing. It. I think he's either going to get hurt or be bad. I just I don't see it working either. Yeah. Uh, Pete asked a question in the chat, Ronaldo Hicks, Ronaldo Lopez or Jordan Hicks, who lasts longer as a starting pitcher. Uh, I would go Ronaldo Lopez there. I kind of actually like, uh, like the chance they're taking there with, uh, with Ronaldo. Here you go. Hyping Ronaldo Lopez again. I know. Hopefully, yeah. uh, <laughs> hopefully someone will, uh, be able to hang it snagged for me again this, uh, this year, like he did last year. Yeah. Um, I'll take Kirsten were- Walder up in the 28th instead. Uh, yeah, our friend Mark Winnaker, who took him from me last year, sent me a message this week about uh, how he noticed that I, I shaded him for uh, for snagging uh, Ronaldo last year in front of me. So hopefully, hopefully, it can happen again. Um, we're in the Reds hat, Jeff. Let's talk Frankie Montas moving to Cincinnati. Uh, mm-hmm. Missed all of twenty twenty. He's from one inning he threw. I think it was on the last day of the season. Uh, he's about pick three twenty two right now in ADP. Uh, as someone who's been good in the past, uh, in 2022, he threw 144, 144 innings, 405, 125. That was the year he got traded from the A's and the Yankees and then got hurt. Strikeout rate that year was 23.5%, but a nice 12.5% swing strike rate. You and I talked plenty of times a couple of years ago about his splitter that really developed that turned him into a really good pitcher in 2021. Good ground ball guy. He is 30 now. He is off a completely missed year. He's moving to a very tough park. Uh, but the price reflects that. There is no risk here. Pick 322, someone that was uh, way higher than that in prior years. What do you feel about Frankie Montas moving to our Reds? So, okay, here's where r- stat projections, rankings based on projections don't help. Because, there, I mean, there's the, the universe is his projection. It's anything yeah. could happen with him. Um, he could he could be a 4-8 guy. He could be a 3-4 guy. If one is to do projections, you got to be responsible and not give him like 150 innings. Yep. But – uh, he could throw 150 innings and be good. And I mean, that's exactly what Steamer has. Steamer has 150 exactly. I've got him at 100. And, you know, but you I could are, be wrong. you're definitely the low, the low man there, then. Yeah. But I mean, it doesn't matter, though. It's just the thing. Yeah. It's like he's, he's all about like, okay, this is an upside play you take in the after round 20. He's an upside how, play. How do you feel about him? How do you feel about being good when he pitches? I mean, I just don't know. He's coming back from a shoulder. I mean, it, it's. That, that this is one where I 
Yeah, he ate great. He had a good spring training out. Okay, I bumped him up a little bit there. He could yeah. be awesome. He got he got a he got paid a good amount of money, but it's a one year deal, right? Yep. Um, so, yeah. If it doesn't work, there's really you know for baseball teams, I know it's a bunch of money, but it's really no risk for one year. Yeah, he he was awesome in 2021. Yep. Um, he was awesome the first half of 2022 until the shoulder kicked in, yep. and then when it did, he was awful. Uh, and that that's just the thing we don't know. And now he's in a terrible park for him. Yeah. Uh, the good news is splitters are in trend right now. Yep. He is the king of splitters. He's helping 40, Hunter Green uh, learn a split splitter too. Oh, nice! He, I like that. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. That this is these are these are good things. It could work out. I hope it works out. Um. I will take chances on him, but man, it's got to be like a. He's going to be a stream early on. He can't be like a rotation mainstay for me. But again, that price reflects that anyhow. But he's a stream. Yeah, we get after the break uh, in you know in the main event. The break is they do a break after the first ten rounds, the first twenty rounds. He's someone that will be at uh, depending on how my team looks. If I'm gonna, if I'm not like I just can really take a take a shot on someone. I think he's someone that you take a shot on because if it doesn't work, yeah, I think we'll know pretty quickly. And if it works, I think he could be uh, he's, he's someone you could throw most weeks. I mean, there's gonna be some games in Cincinnati like yeah, I don't want to face this offense. I don't want to face Atlanta. I don't want to face the Dodgers, etc. But if that pick, you can you can pick you can pick your spots and. He, you can see him working into somebody you can throw most weeks, which yeah. is and it's more not a you can say for a lot of guys down here, right? And it's yeah, he'll play a lot if he can. Um, sure, but he'll still start every fifth day until his shoulder breaks. But if he can is the big thing. And if the worst thing that can happen is if the shoulder is bad, it's compromised, and he tries to pitch through it. Yeah, that's where you get just these yeah. murder that's death where you get, outings. There. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, inning in a third and eight and runs. You're like, and then then he goes to the aisle after that, but you eat the you eat yeah. the outing. Yeah. So I, I think your your construction is right. You wait till after the pick three hundred. If he's still there, then you take him as an upside play. And you're dropping so many guys at that point anyway that you, I think you, maybe you don't start him for a while, see how he looks. You could kind of figure it out, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, you, you want, I think you want to take him a spot where you know it doesn't hurt to drop. Yeah, and his range in the last three days is two forty one to three thirty eight. So sometimes you get him, sometimes you won't. You don't want to have him on every roster though. You just want yeah. to have a sprinkle. Yeah, give me uh, give me a couple of them. Uh, he does last in the twenty first round. I, I'll take a shot there, but uh, I'm rooting for him. Someone that everybody really really likes. People seem to really like Montas, and mm -hmm. I loved him. And I loved him in Oakland, and now he's on uh, now he's on our red. So it uh, kind of works well. Yes, it does. It does. You, you, uh, you're great hat wear again. I'm very Thank happy you. for you that doing that. Thank you. Uh, but last guy I want to ask you about. We'll go we'll go to the four hundreds real quick. Uh, Clark Schmidt was really kind of a sexy buzzy name last year as he was gonna make the Yankees rotation and, you know, guys were hurt and he was moving in. Uh, didn't do much with his opportunity. Four, six, four ERA, one, three, five whip. The strikeouts were weak. He did lower his walks, but six and a half percent. Swing strikeout was down 2%. As I dug in this profile, um, I didn't see much I liked here. Hard hit rate was a little high. Stat cast page pretty blah. He looks like one of the Yankees five starters though. So that's, that's key. I mean, you got a team that's going to score some runs. Uh, you know, I know they didn't last year, but, you know, adding Juan Soto in the middle of the lineup helps Stanton, hopefully healthy, et cetera. Judge, Obviously, was missed a bunch of time. Uh, I didn't get a lot. I didn't get a lot of excitement for for Clark Schmidt. I was a little surprised. I thought I was going to look at this profile and be like four oh six. I'm all over this as a Yankee starter. Um, I didn't really see it. I was not. I was not very impressed when I look. Uh, any interest here? Some. I've rostered him a couple times, but it, it like you said, looking under the hood, it was not yeah. a positive look. It uh, was fun stat about Schmidt: zero double digit strikeout games last year. Did you do the about Schmidt part on purpose right there? Yeah, I did. Sorry. Nice. I caught it at least. <laughs> caught me. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was just, I just, I mean, it's a pick a pitcher in the four hundreds, like whatever, kind of if you want to take a shot in. Him. But I, uh, I was hoping to see something to kind of latch on to, and I didn't really find much that I was, uh, I was excited about at all. Here, I mean, I'll still roster them in places. You're getting them at a price where it's it's a zero cost thing. Yeah, and I mean, anybody you're taking down here, you're you're kind of hoping for anything that works. There's not so a lot of yeah. He's got four pitches. They're all okay. But what if he improves one of them? What if he? Yeah. You know, that's the, it's the what if. He's on a good team. Uh, the ballpark isn't as bad as people think it is. Uh, although you know he's righty, so it does hurt him a little bit more than it would a lefty starter. Um, he, he throws innings. You know, it, it, there, there's a pathway there. There is a pathway there. Um, I was just hoping for more of a something to latch onto with the yep. pathway. But, uh, you know, in the 400s, it's hard to find guys. Uh, I think the answer to that is you don't want to be drafting any starters down here. They're just mm – -hmm. uh, it's really, really rough. I guess you take 
All-star Josiah Gray you could put in your team too, but boy, he was he, he got really rough with the All-Star game too. Not much like there either. Uh, I didn't find a lot of guys uh, in the 400s. I found a lot of guys in the 200s and early 300s I liked. And then it, Funny how uh, that works. It dries up really fast. So was, I didn't find a lot of gems down here. No. Do you ever? I was, I was I, yeah, I was looking for my I was looking for another Kyle Wright from 2 years ago and I uh, I have not found it yet. Doesn't yeah. doesn't mean I won't before uh before the the real the real real drafts start, but uh it's uh it's hard to find right now. That's uh, you I just you got to make sure you get your your 10 starters before like pick 350. You don't want to be taking them in the last 10 or last like uh you know, 6 7 rounds. No, I no, I agree with that generally. And especially cuz I again, our competition has gotten sharper. So yep. that also means the ADP is sharper too. It is. Uh, I've no. I notice a huge difference in AP between now and I don't know eight years ago, ten years ago. I always could find like, oh, I really, I can't believe nobody's found this guy. There's not much of that going on anymore. Yep. Yeah. Somewhere Phil Dussault's computer is pulling out all the good players, and uh, it's 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 too late for all of us. Yeah. Well, we need to hack into his computer. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. Yeah. Jeff, anybody else you want to talk about? We hit a lot of players here. A lot of guys have to pick two hundred. But is there anything else on your mind? Any uh. Any great re- relevations you have about life or anything for us? Mm, no, not right now. Um, pretty good. I'm going to try to get up early to watch it into that PGA tournament. Got some irons in the fire on that one there, so I'm excited. Who, uh, who's your irons in the fire? I, have, I don't think I have anybody up there. Eck wrote you, uh, Ricky, and uh, CT Pan all all have. How, uh, how, close, how close is Ricky? I didn't look at the end. Uh, Ricky is currently T16. He is yeah. 10 under. Through ten, Ekro's leading and used T eight right now. Pan Pan panned out as a free agent pickup. He's gonna he made the cut. Oh, that's good enough right now. But it'd be nice if you put some birdies on tomorrow the board tomorrow. There, no Jeff, no. Sorry, uh, no, I'm not sorry though. Not no, really. pa- no panned out. That was so bad. So yeah, uh, I appreciate. I, I just won't grow up like Peter Pan. I got. That. Oh no! All right, good sign to get out of here. I think Jeff has <laughs> officially uh, officially uh, lost it. Uh, but hour 20 in, that's a good time to lose it. We appreciate everybody for listening. There's a lot of, lot of chatter in the chat today. We really do appreciate that. I love that people are listening and following on live as we go here. I uh, appreciate everybody for listening on, uh, downloading is on their way to work on Monday morning too. We really appreciate hearing about all the people that do that. Uh, Jeff, I'll be back at you next Sunday night. Uh, Jeff, are you going to do targets or fades? I don't know which, maybe a little bit of both. What do you think? Uh, cause I you're think... not going to be here. You're not going to be here the week after and then after that we're drafting. Well, maybe we do a little of both then. I think we do a little of both. I think we do not. Uh, yeah, let's do a little bit of both. Yeah, negative advertising always works. We'll lead with fades, and then we'll get some targets at yeah, the end. I like fades more anyway. I'm more of a negative, uh, negative, uh, negative person. So especially I'm, I'm after hearing that. what I did at the end of the pod here today, I get it. <laughs> Fair enough. Well said. So we appreciate everybody listening. Uh, if uh, anybody wants to uh, follow Jeff on Twitter, Jeff underscore Erickson. I am at Scott Jenstead. Uh, appreciate everybody listening. Th- appreciate fan tracks for the sponsorship of the podcast all preseason. We'll be back at you next Sunday night. Hope everybody has a really good week. Uh, hopefully uh, doing a lot of drafts. Hope they all go well and take care. We'll talk to you next week.